Good afternoon, my name is Kainzan Moloye. In this video, I'm going to discuss structural design of operating system. I'm going to be very clear and also I'll try to be brief. What do we mean when we say structural design of operating system? It means the arrangement and interaction of the various components of the operating system. It follows separation of concerns principle, which means that the operating system is structured in such a way that there are independent parts that work together. So in this way, the operating system becomes not too complex. We are going to discuss five uh, approaches to uh, design of operating system. So the five of them I outlined here are the, uh, the first one, monolithic structure, the layered approach, micro kernels, visualized systems, and then the client server architecture. The first one is a monolithic structure. An example is given MS-DOS. I'm just going to give a summary of all the points I highlighted here. In the monolithic design of operating system, we have that there is no particular structural pattern. All aspects of the operating system is acute with maximum privilege. So we don't have separation of models or layers that have different privileges. So we have that uh, there's no special feature. Just think of it this way. A user can execute a command and control the hardware. It doesn't have to pass through uh, any layer of management uh, features like file management now. It has to be everything being all together as one big model. So, which does not actually uh, give room for security. So let's look at the next one. Okay, we have uh, the same monolithic uh, uh, structure illustrated. So you have this user application here. It's easily uh, uh, interacting with the various parts of the operating system. And of course, down to the hardware. So we have the kernel mode and the user mode. They are just uh, almost interrelated together. The next one is the layer structure. And in the layer structure, the components of the operating system are organized into models, one on top of the other. So you have this user module or user layer right from the top where the user can interact with the system but then it has to pass through certain models before it gets to the hardware. So the user cannot communicate directly with the hardware. It has to pass through the, uh, the file management, the, the, the IO management, and so on until we get to the hardware. So the advantages of this layer structure is that it can accommodate subsystems and errors can also be trapped and corrected before it drills down to the hardware. So here I have the, the illustration of the user, the layout structure of the operating system. You have the outermost layer here is the user interface. Then below we have the file management. Then we have in the next layer the input output. Then we have the memory management uh, layer there before we get to the kernel. So before an, a user error goes right to, to affect the, the hardware, is, is going to be trapped somewhere. So the layer structure, of course, is an improvement over the the, uh, the monolithic design. So we have the micro kernel structure. Of course, this micro kernel structure, I think Linux or some other Unix-based operating system is structured this way. What it means is that the kernel uh, has been decoupled into modules. So instead of having this kernel containing all the internal modules, some of the modules has been separated and implemented separately as different models. So for instance, you may have the, the file management separated from the kernel and implemented as a different model. So meaning that if the user wants to access files, it doesn't have to get to the kernel. It may just use one model. And the same thing goes maybe with input output processing can be implemented as a different model. So the micro kernel architecture have the advantage that uh, it can also, of course, trap errors. And it, it can also prevent errors in one model from uh, 
uh, replicating to other models in the operating system is also an improvement over the, the monolithic approach. This is a micro kernel illustrated. So you have here the application, the user interface. So we have these uh, models has been implemented as different models. Okay. Right. Then we have visualized systems. I think this is what really is being used in uh, uh, currently, and that is actually an improvement over all the. Uh, uh, structures we've dis discussed so far. In visualized system, we have a hardware, a single computer runs several op operating system. So what it means is just above the hardware, we have uh, a different layer called the visual machine layer. So on top of this visual machine layer, we have operating systems uh, set up on top visual machines. So operating system actually are not installed directly in the hardware, but they are installed on top of a layer, uh, on top the hardware layer. So one layer above the hardware, we have a layer that helps us to create uh, visual operating systems. So I would like you to look at the illustration here. So let's see. So you have this physical hardware. You have this visualization server. I think uh, the visualization server is a, a software application that sits on top of the hardware. So on top of the visualization server or layer, they have the visual machines uh, implementing operating systems. Uh, my video where I discuss visualization, I think, uh, is, is very much clarified. Then we have a client server architecture whereby we have uh, operating system on the server, we have another uh, uh, user model or a client maybe connected to the server by a network, and then the server processes request and sends back the results back to the client. So you can think of it like a, a, a system whereby we have one part of the operating system in one location one part the client side in another location and they communicate maybe through uh, the network so this what we have here we have the server here we have the clients the clients actually uh, send request to the server and is processed by the server and then the results are sent back to the client so that's about the client server architecture so can you remember what we've discussed so far we discussed five different structural design of operating system. The first one is the monolithic approach. The second one is a micro kernel architecture. The third one is a layered architecture. The fourth one we discussed is the visualized system. And the last one is a client server architecture. So I'd like to thank you for viewing. I hope this has been informative for you, but please don't, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more.